what about Dodd Frank? Do you foresee any attempts to roll back some of those reforms? Of what? Dodd Frank. Uh, the banking committee is certainly going to be taking a look at Dodd Frank. I've called it frequently Obamacare for banks. Um, the big guys are doing just fine under Dodd Frank. The community bankers are struggling, and um, I do think the banking committee is going to want to take a look at, at how much damage it's done to the little guys who have nothing whatsoever to do with the uh, the meltdown in 2008. So I'd be surprised if the Banking Committee isn't going to take a look at it, and they may well send something our way. Joe Arnold? Senator, you had said after 2010 you were surprised that, that President Obama did not shift more toward the center. Does he have a responsibility after the message from the American people last night to do that now, and did you communicate that with him on a phone call? Well, I mean, I hope that's what he does, because you can't really do anything without a presidential signature. I mean, several of you mentioned it. I mean, he. The veto pen is a pretty powerful tool, and um, I think both Reagan and Clinton are good examples of accepting the government you have rather than fantasizing about the government you wish you had. In other words, they dealt with what they had. Reagan never had the House. Clinton didn't have the House or Senate for six of the eight years. So, I, you know, the President's really got a choice. I think because of the strength of the veto pen, he could probably stay on the current course he's on you know, just vetoing any effort we made to push back against what he's doing and having the people who work for him do his bidding. Or he could say, let's see if there's some areas of agreement. And I've mentioned a couple that I think are pretty pretty big and important issues that I think we have potential areas of agreement, trade and tax reform. So we'll see. Senator, you're asking the President to move toward the middle. Senator You're asking the President president to move towards the middle. Are you ready to meet him there? And if so, how will you prevent conservative members from yanking you back? Um, I, look, I, I'm pretty familiar with our conference, including the new members who are coming in. The vast majority of them um, don't feel that they were sent to Washington to just fight all the time. And um, as I've said repeatedly here, divided government is not the reason to do nothing. In fact, divided government frequently has been pretty productive. And I think the vast majority of my members would rather make progress on things that they think the country needs to be dealt with than not. But in our system, the president is the most important player because of all the, the, the obvious constitutional advantage he has. And so it would require his complicity to do that. And he's been protected from having to do that the last four years by the dysfunctional Senate, which doesn't pass anything, doesn't send him anything that he doesn't like. Now he's going to have a, a Congress that's going to be more challenging for him, but the choice is really his. And I'm hoping that he will decide uh, to move to the Senate. Senator, Senator, Senator Rand Paul, Paul as said, recently as last night, um, Ted Cruz declined to say whether or not he would support <laughs> you for majority leader. I'm wondering when you spoke to him, um, <laughs> did he pledge his support to you? And if not, are you Well, let me just make it? a prediction for you. <laughs> a week from tomorrow, I'll be elected majority leader of the Senate. Thanks a lot, everyone. <laughs> The man who is very likely going to be the next Senate Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell, who was reelected last night uh, to another term from the state of Kentucky. Uh, he said a number of times in his news conference there at the University of Louisville that he will see uh, where he and the White House can agree on what they can accomplish. And he thinks there are areas on which they can agree, tax reform and trade, he said, are two areas of potential agreement. He seemed a good deal more open to negotiation and compromise with the White House. Uh, said uh, that there would be no government shutdown, nor would there be any default on the national debt. Senator McConnell went on to say that his relationship with the president uh, was, quoting Reagan uh, on the Soviets, trust but verify. He mentioned that he wants to hear from the president on what the White House wants to spend on the war on Ebola, and we have heard from the president that he will ask for $6.2 billion worth of emergency funds. Indeed, we will hear shortly from the president of the United States. We're expecting a little bit before 3 o'clock for the president to come into the East Room for a full-fledged news conference, something that he hasn't done a great deal of 
certainly since summer by my recollection, but anyway, we'll hear from the president later on about that.